Hi everyone, welcome to my project, Rights. I've been collaging and writing the scene for almost a year and actually, fuck all that. This is Rights. My poetry is interested in the idea of the self, and the family, as well as questions of desire, pleasure, belonging, home, and meaning. Rights is a zine of poems that examines the relationship between who we love and who we are through narrating my experiences as a queer Asian femme in relation to externally imposed versions of womanhood. I've come to believe a family and a self are not singular things but many people at the same time, sometimes evolving in opposite directions, often refracted through love. So much lies in the relationships we have and the stories we receive from others, so we must peel back their layers to make sense of ourselves. How to embrace a femme aesthetic when it is often forcefully and externally imposed, particularly along racial boundaries. Would someone understand queer Asian paradise if it was shown to them? These are the questions I keep returning to. Wright's takes lessons from literary studies, Asian American studies, queer theory, and manifests itself through different artistic mediums, mainly poetry, collage, and more traditional pencil and watercolor drawings. Today, I'm going to be exploring the intersection of literary studies and queer theory, and why specifically the formal choice of poetry is important to Wright's. So one English scholar I turned to was Stephanie Burt, who is a literary critic and poet as well. She coined the term elliptical poetry, which I think my project is nodding to and extending. Burt says, elliptical poets try to manifest a person who speaks the poem and reflects the poet while using all the verbal gizmos developed over the last few decades to undermine the coherence of speaking selves. I'm interested in this larger gesture of maintaining a sense of self while allowing for multiplicities in that in my persona poems, I will be embodying different archetypes that have been projected onto me, either by myself, by other people, by the world. Think like the role of anime schoolgirl, the role of the picture bride, the role of the cyborg, something even more fantastical like the conflation and consumption of Asian femmes and Asian food, the role of daughter, these are selves that are contained in me and have a unique voice. Bert continues, the poets tell almost stories or almost obscured ones. They are sardonic, angered, defensively difficult or desperate. They want to entertain as thoroughly as, but not to resemble, television. And I guess this is where perspectives and visions begin to diverge and where I turn to queer theory to carry me forward. A scholar that I turn to in that field is the inimitable Judith Butler. Butler is a philosopher and gender theorist that is most famous for their theory of gender performativity. In their book, Bodies That Matter, published in 1992, Butler states that the misapprehension about gender performativity is this, that gender is a choice, or that gender is a role, or that gender is a construction that one puts on as one puts on clothes in the morning, that there is a one who is prior to this gender, a one who goes to the wardrobe of gender and decides with deliberation which gender it will be today. To me, what Butler is getting at is that gender is a performance, but not a voluntary act or choice. It's also not an individual act, but a required compulsory performance that must be repeated over and over again. I'm interested in leveraging this understanding of gender as a way into the different selves and speakers I'm inhabiting in my poems. It allows me to investigate what Asian women had to do to be legible as women, both in a Taiwanese context and an American one. The poems I've written so far feel like a more triumphant kind of elliptical poetry, because they are less interested in the undermining of self, but celebrating that the undermining is inevitable. Finally, I want to talk about why it's important that this project is in its zine form, that it is composed of poems, rather than something like an essay on elliptical poetry and queer theory. I learned from Paul Tran, a former Stegner Fellow and mentor of mine, that poetry is discovery. Discovery is important because, in their words, it opposes dominant modes of announcement or transcription simply of what a speaker already observes about their experience. 
And how does poetry achieve that discovery exactly? According to Carl Phillips, discovery is achieved by restless transformation of experience. What I've learned is that this transformation occurs both at the level of content and form, a term I use to mean the imaginative and intentional patterning of language to not express, but enact experience. For example, in some of the poems you've seen, the ways I've lineated or broken up the text in them is intentional. The negative space is intentional. The delivery of information is intentional. The repetition and breaking of repetition are intentional. All of these choices shape not only my writing experience, but a reader's experience of the poem. Forkagome uses couplets to suggest the doubling or pairing or twinning of self between the speaker and Kagome, who they are paying homage to. The repetition of two also emphasizes this relationship. In evening, I included additional white space between echo and was in the line, in this life I had to learn an echo, was pleasure, to mimic both on the page and sonically the feeling of an echo. Personality test repurposes something you might have seen on BuzzFeed or in Teen Vogue to teach you more about a speaker and their desires. As a child, I pretended to be a tree moves across the page in one long sentence to mimic the turning of the mind of the speaker, as well as the shape of a tree, the back and forth relationship between a mother and a daughter, and the dance of a ballerina, which are all topics touched upon in the poem. In the food fantasy poem, I tap into the historical guzzle form to explicate the speaker's strained relationship with boba, with each repetition of boba taking on a new valence. To explore these multiple selves, I didn't want to be didactic. I wanted to be in that discovery mode. I couldn't write an essay because for something like that to succeed, the writer needs to have a preformed argument and conclusion they are trying to convince others of. Poet W.B. Yeats summed it up perfectly. Out of the quarrel with others, we make rhetoric, whereas out of the quarrel with ourselves, we make poetry. To close, I'd like to read one of my poems from the zine, Personality Test. Personality test. You wish you were an inch taller, written about, invisible. You like the fact that the moon has moon quakes, only humans blush, a heart beats a hundred thousand times a day. You are not over losing your copy of Mrs. Dalloway, losing in student council elections to your ex, your ex. You dream of becoming a superhero, becoming a tree, becoming yourself. You think intimacy is slicing fruit, telepathy, forgotten secrets. You do not know how to whistle, rock climb, forgive. You are scared of yesterday, today, tomorrow. You are tired of deadlines, small mirrors, saying no.